Hey, before this week's show, we wanted to share with you another podcast that we really enjoy. Check it out. In the first season of Moonbase Theta Out, Roger Bergato Fisher sent official reports on the base shutdown. In season two, we hear another side of the same story, where things get a lot more personal. I am not giving up, and I'm sure as hell not letting you give up on me. Crush that pop can there for me. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I'd love to see that calmly do a real day's work. Broadcasting, this is Rajo Bergardo Fisher. I love this place. I love the feel of it. I love what I've cultivated. You did not program me to express dishonesty. It is my role to slowly seduce you into a little moral ambiguity. They can take that list of new base directives and fold it until it's all corners and shove it right into their collective. Moonbase Theta Out Season 2, with new episodes every other Sunday. Moonbase Theta Out. Listening to Husk. Good, you're awake. You've been out for quite a while. What? Where? No, 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 no. She got away. She got away. You lost a lot of blood. People always forget how important and fragile their feet are. Do you know how many blood vessels and tiny bones are in there? Ugh, Doc, my foot hurts so bad right now. Yep, more nerve endings in that ankle than the inner ear. Well, at least there used to be. Not sure how much you'll feel going forward if you get my drift. Thanks, Doc. What happened to the girl? Did, did they tell you anything? You're gonna be fine. Bullet went through, Shockwave did a number on your metatarsals, though. Uh, we got you pinned and stitched, but you lost a lot of blood. We want to keep you here a few days to observe you and get you back on your feet. Uh, sorry, I mean, get you up and running. I... get you well. Yes, get you well. I'm sorry. Look, I don't have a few days. I need to be out of here this afternoon, Doc. Well, unfortunately, due to your familial history with blood clots, we need to monitor your situation. And you know the rules. And you're going to need quite a bit of PT if you want to get back to walking soon. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Doc. The nurse will be in to get your lunch order soon. I'll be back tomorrow morning. Until then, sit tight and rest. The more rest you get, the sooner we'll be able to get you out of here. The nurse will be by to get your order soon. No one has time for this. Oh, oh, look at that. They've got salmon and guava jam. Oh my god, oh, that's my favorite. Not together, but just in general. You don't get that too often. Must be a special order from somewhere. Gina and I walked through the main doors of the hospital, from daylight to fluorescent, from fresh air to overly sterile. I never liked hospitals. Who does, I suppose? Everything is white, beige, baby blue, or mauve. Oh, there's some of that teal here and there, 90s upholstery. Makes me feel like these chairs are dressed up like 90s sci-fi folk. Gina said we had to come and talk to Morrison. Well, I wanted to see him anyway make sure he's not being too hot on himself. And I stopped by the store to get some of that good toothpaste. I don't know what kind of stuff they've got here. Toothpaste is always one of those things you forget when you go on trips. You get your toothbrush, your soap, but that tube of toothpaste never quite makes it in your kit. Not that Morrison was planning to be out of his house anyway. Knock, knock. Gina? How you doing, buddy? What day is it? As far as I know, you've still got your vision, Morrison. There's a calendar right there. Oh, gosh. Sorry, I'm so out of it. I, I didn't even notice. They've got salmon on the menu. Oh, good you still got your appetite. My mom always said if you're well enough to eat, you're well enough to ride a horse. Where are we at with the case? The case? 
You shot yourself in the foot. I'm just glad you were only dumb enough to misfire on your own damn self. Do you know how this is going to look when this gets out? Portland Chief of Police shoots self and investigation in the foot. Two steps forward, one shot in the foot. Aw, oh, now come on now, Gina. I mean, it won't be so bad. Nobody else got hurt, so we are going to be fine. You know, and he's going to pay for it as it is. I mean, with the pain and all. I bet people will understand that this type of thing just happens. It's a hazard of the job. Please tell me you at least caught up with Dale. No. No one caught up to her. There was a lot of confusion with the shot going off, let alone why a gun was involved in the first place. We were just going to take an unarmed girl down to the station for a quick talk. Nothing out of the ordinary. We were ready for all of this to be completely honest. Do you have any idea how this is going to look for the Bureau? I'm glad I wasn't the only one scratching my head on this one. I'm not even sure why she fled. It sure makes her look like she's got something to hide, though. I mean, innocent people don't just flee like that. Scared people do. I don't blame her. We are going to have a lot of explaining to do. And HR wants to talk to you as soon as you are able. No, no time for that right now. We still got this case to work out. Where is she? Well, we don't know. She's fled. We've got several officers out there for her. And Mrs. Ivanovich called in earlier today to report Rebecca's father leaving quickly with a suitcase. Something about this case doesn't seem right. Like they're all in on something that they're not sharing. Don't you think, Morrison? Lots of moving parts right now. Too many variables. Don't don't look at me like that. I don't know. I still don't think it was Rebecca. I, I mean, Miss Dale had anything to do with it. And just the wrong place at the wrong time, and she certainly didn't deserve to be scared to death in some dark forest. I, I don't blame her for taking off and trying to get out there and on Warren, her Warren, Gina, I need to find her. We need to find her to keep her safe or to figure out how she was involved. Either way, we need to know where she is. Got that? This is our top priority right now. Keep the girl safe, and the rest will become clear. Safe, huh? Safe. You might need to look that one up. I don't know if it's the pain meds or just you refusing to tell us what's going on, but either way, none of this is making sense. You were the one who had us go after her at Faraday Lake, and now you're worried about keeping her safe? You were about to arrest her. I gotta get back to the station. I hope your foot feels better. And when you feel like filling us in on what's actually going on, well, I'll talk to you then. Gina. Don't mind her. She's agitated at the moment. Nobody's been getting much sleep down at the station. And, you know, ever since this accident... And I'll keep you in the loop, but I gotta run. She's my ride back. You take care now. Enjoy the salmon. Enjoy my salmon? <laughs> oh, the situation is so, so messed up. I'm lying there in my hospital bed. The steady beep of the monitor tells me that my heart is still beating. My foot throbs a little bit, but it's distant, the pain being held at bay by the painkillers. They make me feel good, when I can just slip back into sleep and stop worrying about the case. Slowly, easily, painlessly, just slipping downwards. Nope, nope, no more slipping. We're waking back up and answering the phone. Oh shit. Ah, fine. Hello? I presume you know why I'm calling? I did what I could. Well, what you did was misfire and let the target escape. Alas, I know that now. It's my mistake for asking you to do something you were incapable of doing. Stopping one measly child. Clearly my expectations were too high for a trained officer. If I hadn't been... If I hadn't been shot in the foot, I would have been able to apprehend the subject, but she you just... You shot yourself in the foot, Morrison. Stop trying to blame the rest of the department for your problems. It doesn't matter now. We've become aware that Rebecca had some outside assistance. 
This means that someone on the outside has information on ABI. Sensitive information, Mr. Morrison. We can't afford for these leaks to continue. We've identified the target, one Paul Smith, who seems to fancy himself an amateur sleuth. He's been poking around our organization for some time now, but it seems to be coming to some sort of head. This cannot stand. We will need to dispose of him immediately. You can't just pick people off like flies. Yes. Yes, we can. What could possibly be so important that you deem it necessary to disappear people left and right? It's just business. Nothing personal. I just wanted to let you know we won't be needing your services for the foreseeable future. Of course, as long as you want your secret kept, you'll keep quiet about what you've seen and heard. Understood? Sweet dreams, Morrison. I'm sure it's about your nap time. Uh, oh, Jesus. Wow, that sounds rough. Rough, rough, rough. Excuse me? Oh, rough conversation there. I had a rough conversation with my wife the other day. She wanted me to change the will to make sure that everything got left to her instead of the children. I told her I wasn't so sure about that, but she was really pressing the matter. No matter. Say, did you decide on lunch? Or dinner? You should have both menus there. Oh, no. Well, uh, the salmon looks good. Solid choice? I get that almost every day. Highly recommend. Every day? Going on week three. Long term. The serious stuff. Sorry, I'm I'm not really in the mood to talk. That's okay, I can do the talking. It's just nice to have a roommate again. They come and go, a little bit of death, a little bit of release. So, is your wife having you change the will too? You seemed to really get upset when the number came across your screen. Uh, official, official police business, actually. It can't share. Sorry, I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna take a nap. Ooh, a police officer. That explains all the police coming in and out of the room all of a sudden. Thought you must be some kind of hardened criminal or something. I was thinking armed robbery. My bad. Should have guessed cop, though. You've got that kind of look about you. Say... I've known a few police officers over the years. You ever meet Buddy Jenkins? Uh, no. Norman Thompson? Look, I'm I'm not in the mood to swap stories or listen to stories about everyone that you've ever met. Sorry, I I just need to get a little bit more sleep right now. Okay, if you say so, Rumi. We'll get plenty of time to dive into that later. What a day. I don't know exactly what Gina knows, but she seems to think something strange is going on, and I must admit I have the same feeling. It's just a lot out of place for us, and not how I would handle the situation, not at all. Oh, that man is driving me insane. Is he driving you insane? He's driving me insane. But seriously, what an a-hole. Remind me why we even bothered to visit him in the hospital? Gina, I don't know if we should be talking about our superior that way. We had to go see him. It's the right thing to do. What an a-hole. I mean, how long are we going to stand for this? And what are we getting mixed up in, Warren? This is gross incompetence at the very least. Could be something a lot worse, though. Not to mention he's the leader of the oldest old boys club in town besides that racquetball league. Well, Gina, whatever it is, uh, you're a competent individual and I'm confident this will all work itself out soon. Uh, Let's just focus on the work ahead of us and we're going to figure this all out. And With Morrison in the hospital, we'll have a few days to get our bearings. And some damn peace and quiet. Still want to meet up for a beer later? If we can talk about something besides work, then yes. Connor's at six? See you then. So, you ready for that welfare check on Ivanovich tomorrow? I do believe I am currently off the clock, but yes, I am. 
And by ready, I mean, are you planning to bring her flowers or anything? Gina, now that would just be inappropriate. Is it, though? You're both adults, and you sure do have the sweets for her. Gina? Oh, no, am I that obvious? I don't want to make her feel uncomfortable, and not to mention that she is directly involved with an active investigation. You know, that would be strictly, and I mean strictly, against protocol. Besides, she's in a bad place right now, and I don't want her to get the wrong idea. No, this has got to wait at least until we figure out what happened to Dimitri, don't you think? It just seems like the right thing to do. Oh, no, come I'll... on. I'll go with you. Then it won't be so awkward. I'll wait in the car or something, and you can have a moment with her. As far as the welfare check goes, I think she really just needs someone to talk to. You know, you always dance around these things until it's too late. Well, not this time, Warren. I don't know, Gina. I've known you for long enough, and I know you'll make excuses for as long as possible. You, sir, are a relationship hesitator. You're going to have to make a move eventually. She's expecting you anyway, so why not just lump them together? It'll make a great story. Trust me. Mm. It'll be cute. Who doesn't love flowers? Just like a movie. Wait and see. She'll take the hint. I think she might be sweet on you, too. She hasn't said anything to me, of course. It's just a feel. You really think so? Maybe. Probably. Either way, this is the only way you'll ever know for sure. Well, when you put it that way. So, how come you never finish your drink all the way? Pa taught me that. He used to say, gotta leave some for Satan or he's gonna follow you home. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> We walk into this diner. It looks deep, like we'll have some privacy at the back. I love it when they go all out with the decor. It's 50s car themed. License plates on the walls, old grills, and they've got actual cars to sit in while you eat. We order and go back around the corner, past all of the after church folk at their Sunday best, ladies in big hats and little boys in suits itching to get out of their stuffy ties. The waitress is friendly. Apparently she's just moved to town. I don't know why exactly. Something family related. She says it was a mistake. I appreciate the friendliness, but her story is so grim. Not too much going on around here. I can't get over the bad taste in my mouth about this place. Burger with cheese? That was me. And no cheese for you. Side of pickles. Yeah, thank you. Twelve. I counted them. Swole bros swarming. You know, like real bulky dudes. The diner is undoubtedly about to make their biggest sale of the week. They are way too chiseled to be from around here. Probably a rugby team or something. Dimitri's just sitting across from me in awkward silence. So, you're really going to make me ask? I, I, I don't know where to start. You have to tell me what happened. Whatever you say, don't worry about what I'll think. I'm over that. I'm just going to down this burger and you start at where we left off. In the forest. Um, well you were there though. You don't remember? The hospital? Maybe you weren't awake. I I woke up in a hospital and you were there across from me. I, I fell back asleep and when I came out of it again you were gone. You were just gone. Husk is a production of ABI Global, written and produced by Emma Brown and Sean Afflenalp, associate producer Elliot Jacobson. For a full list of cast, go to huskpodcast.com.